What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So yesterday, news broke that absolutely shook up the gaming industry when it comes to Platinum Games and a pretty key departure that has now brought up several questions, which we'll go over all of that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about another impossible port for the Switch, which we have seen many, but this one might be the most impossible yet and we'll also be talking about Sony as they're running a pretty big sale right now for the PlayStation 5 that I think leans in heavily to a pretty big milestone they're attempting to reach. Guys if you enjoy these videos make sure you hit that like button helps out a ton and if new here to the Spawn Wave channel make sure you subscribe down below and we're gonna start today with Capcom and Microsoft. We know Microsoft, of course, has been making a bunch of acquisition over the years with Activision Blizzard seemingly wrapping up. However, Capcom was posed the question of if Microsoft wanted to acquire you, how would you respond? And this was from Bloomberg. We can see this posted up though and transcribed over on Eurogamer. It says Capcom would gracefully decline any acquisition offer from Microsoft, according to the company's chief operating officer going on to say, quote, I believe it would be better if we were equal partners. And yeah, at this point, Capcom is doing significantly better than they were before Monster Hunter World came out. I mean, really at that time, if Monster Hunter World didn't end up becoming an overwhelming success, who knows where Capcom would be now? They may have been acquired, I assume probably by Microsoft, but who knows, other large entities could come in like a Tencent or something that would infuse money in order to keep the Capcom going at the pace they were trying to. And then of course they got to their Resident Evil remakes and the rest is history from there. But yeah, Capcom is in a really, really good financial position, so there's no real point in them looking to sell or be acquired. They, as they mentioned, would rather be equals. And I think that makes sense again with where Capcom is and probably where they're headed next year with I'm sure another big time Moss Hunter announcement. Also months ago, we had talked about the situation with Aspire, Knights Old Republic 2, and that downloadable content that was supposed to restore lost content for the game. And unfortunately that didn't end up happening. And it, it was a really, really big thing because it borders on, well, it probably is false advertisement at that point, right? Well, it looks like some people are going to test it in court with a class action lawsuit. We can see this posted up over on The Gamer. This is the case Malachi Michelonis versus Aspire Media. Now you can view it online and read through it, but the basic premise as they say here, quote, in 2022 defendants Aspire and Saber advertise KOTOR to users of the video game console Nintendo Switch as having never before released restored content DLC. Plaintiff and numerous other consumers were excited about the new content the defendants claimed was coming soon. In fact, KOTOR sat at the top of Nintendo's eShop rankings and we know what happened from there. They were unable to do it for whatever reason they necessarily haven't said and maybe it would come out here in this case, but I mean, clearly a lot of people bought the game under the idea that they would be getting this restored content through way of DLC released after the game came out. So yeah, you're gonna feel burned about it and you're gonna look at it and say, well, that's that's false advertising to me. So they're testing it here in court and uh, interesting to keep tabs on this one as they go along. Class action lawsuits tend to take a while and even then you end up getting maybe a, a two or three dollar check in the mail. I'm more curious if we find out the reasoning behind why they couldn't get that DLC done. So we'll keep an eye on it. Oh, and big news for Persona fans, as it looks like we will be having physical copies released for Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4. This was shared over on Limited Run Games, which you can see this on their Twitter account, saying that's right, Persona 3 Portable is coming to Limited Run on September 29th. Check it out on Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation 5. They go a step further with a, a, a steelbook edition that they have here, which looks ridiculous, but then it gets even more wild with the portable SES edition. Uh, yeah, th there you go. Again, Persona fans probably having a blast seeing all of this stuff that they can, I guess, get their order in September 29th, and then who, who knows when it'll, it'll show up. It's limited run, it takes a while. But Persona 4 Golden is also coming to limited run games on October 27th. That's the one I'm more interested in, 
Persona 3 Portable's fine, but come on, Persona 4 Golden is that, that's, that's the one there, I think. So I'll keep an eye out for that, but really cool stuff here for Persona fans. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Platinum Games and Hideki Kamiya. And this was uh, like out of nowhere, it seems. It wasn't just me who was absolutely shocked by this. A lot of the replies were like, wait, what, what happened here? Well, we can take a look. This posted up over on a Platinum Games account where they say, we regret to announce that Hideki Kamiya will be leaving Platinum Games on October 12th, 2023. We are truly grateful for his creative ideas, leadership, and contribution to the growth of Platinum Games from our startup to this very day. We believe that he will continue to succeed in his future endeavors as a game creator. We are looking forward to seeing the game industry grow into a better place with him in it. We wish him all the best for the future. Now, Hideki Kimiya did respond just a few minutes later, so it kind of seemed like they at least had statements lined up to be released around that time, where he says, as announced on the official Platinum Games account, I will be leaving Platinum Games on October 12, 2023. This came after a lot of consideration based on my own beliefs and was by no means an easy decision to make. However, I feel this outcome is for the best. I will continue to create my Hideki Kimiya way. I hope you'll keep your eyes peeled. Now, Hideki Kamiya, of course, is best known as director for games like Resident Evil 2, Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, Akami, Bayonetta, Wonderful 101. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Also has done supervisor roles for a number of other games. And I mean, re just recently, Bayonetta 3 came out. He was uh, one of the writers there, of course, had a hand in Bayonetta Origins. But the big project that to me is left with all kinds of questions is Project GG. This was going to be uh, like an original IP that Platinum Games just owned outright. And it seems that something must have happened internally that had Hideki Kamiya deciding, you know what, we're just going to go our separate ways on this one. And uh, I mean, he's one of the founders at Platinum Games. So this is a really big deal. Uh, I mean, he's one of the people who had his, one of the, the goals on, uh, on Wonderful 101 when they were kickstarting it. And one of the th rewards was getting blocked by Kamiya on Twitter. He's also the guy that blocks like everyone. It's, it's, it's a whole thing, right? But I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what went wrong here that would make him break away. And the only thing I can think of is the, the game itself, Project GG, maybe was bordering a little too far into the live service stuff. I mean, really, we're just kind of speculating from the outside at this point. But we have heard mention from Platinum Games and some of the higher ups that, uh, that they were looking more and more into the live service stuff. And with pressure from outside investments, it wouldn't shock me if that was going to be the case. And maybe it just wasn't something that Hideki Kamiya wanted to be a part of, or his creative vision was clashing with it. It's just, it seems like such a strange out of nowhere departure. And of course, what would be next for Hideki Kamiya? Well, I'm sure there are plenty of, I'm sure there's plenty of companies who wouldn't mind publishing a game if he had an idea for it, or who knows, maybe he gets back up with Shinji Mikami and they form some sort of indie studio that, again, could probably get funding from, I'm sure, a larger publisher. Who knows, maybe Microsoft <laughs> comes in and is like, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's fund you guys a project and we can get it on the Xbox, Game Pass, PC, all of that. But definitely keep an eye out with whatever Hideki Kamiya has next, because it does seem like he's not interested in leaving the games industry. So uh, I guess we'll see what's next for him and definitely what's next for Platinum Games because they're in a very odd spot right now. Next up, let's talk about Sony and actually a pretty cool sale that's going on right now for the PlayStation 5, specifically for new owners of the PS5 or maybe a second PlayStation 5. It, this basically comes down to you buy a PS5 and you get one of their uh, big first party titles for free. In fact, we can see this over on Kotaku with the entire list that's provided. And this is live now and will run until October 20th. So before the holiday season officially kicks off, I guess if you're getting a PS5, maybe as a gift for the holidays, You'd want to open it up, activate it, and then just claim one of these titles for it. But nonetheless, these would all be games that you could choose as your free title. They have Spider-Man Miles Morales and then Spider-Man Remastered. Those are split up. Kind of a shame because we had that Ultimate Edition that came out for Miles Morales. I feel like it would make more sense just to have all of that connected. Anyway, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Demon Souls, the Last of Us Part 1, Sackboy A Big Adventure, Returnal, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection, and then Death Stranding Director's Cut. 
looking at this, if if I had to pick one, I, I guess the I guess the one that would make the most sense would be God of War Ragnarok, since it's not part of Sony's subscription service yet. But I, I do like Horizon Forbidden West uh, next to any of the Spider-Man games. But Horizon, there is a lot of value there. And that is a game that certainly shows off what the PlayStation 5 can do. So if you want a game that really shows the visuals that, in like an open world setting that's it's pretty large, that'd be the one. Otherwise, Ratchet and Clank, I think that's a pretty fun game too. It's just... It's a bit shorter. Like, you can get done Ratchet & Clank in, what, like, 12 hours or something? I think it took 15 hours for a Platinum Trophy. But, nonetheless, not a bad offer here that they have set up. And it's I think it's clearly designed for them to continue selling PlayStation 5s at a rapid pace. They had discussed with investors they'll do whatever they can to reach that 25 million unit goal by the end of this fiscal year. And that would be at the end of March. 2024 and that's that's fast approaching and they got off to a bit of a slower start for this fiscal year so i would expect more and more sales and deals like these to pop up over the next six to eight months in order to reach that pretty lofty goal but hey if you haven't gotten a ps5 yet and there's some games on there at least one you think that you would enjoy might be a good time to pick one up next up let's talk about another impossible port for the switch and this would be one that i would categorize under like the most impossible i know the witcher 3 was very very impressive you can even say mortal kombat 1 is impressive but i mean the, a lot of cutbacks being made there and even then it's uh it's kind of sketchy but Something like Red Dead Redemption 2. I mean, if that showed up, I think most people would be like, oh, really? That's that's actually going to work on the Switch? Well, you can see this posted up over on Twitter from Necrofelipe, who points out that uh, the Switch categorization was added to the rating for Red Dead Redemption 2 in Brazil. It's alongside, of course, the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the PC. Now there is one issue we can't really tell when it was added. It could have been sitting there for years at this point. It could also be a mistake. So keep that in mind. There are some question marks here when it comes to this. However, we have seen many, many titles get leaked out early from different ratings boards and technically Brazil wouldn't be a first or anything like that. It's usually like Brazil or like the Korean ratings boards generally give us an idea that yeah, something's coming out in the near future. Sometimes it can be like a year later, but for Red Dead Redemption 2, this one is throwing people off because it does sound like something that would be lined up for the next generation system from Nintendo and Rockstar would come in and have Red Dead Redemption 2 ready to go at launch or within that first year. However, I actually wouldn't be surprised if they figured out how to get it on the Switch. And I don't I don't mean like cloud-based because something else that's been pointed out is Brazil doesn't typically rate cloud games like streaming games. So in that instance, I think, believe it or not, the one hang-up, the only thing I can think of looking at this, it's not the Switch being able to run the game, it's actually the, the amount of storage needed for the game. Like it's what, like over 100 gigabytes or something on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. I'm sure they can whittle that down a bit, but this might be a game that only comes out as like a digital title. And the other aspect to this, we have seen Rockstar announce, like Red Dead Redemption, we just saw that, right? Go to the Switch. They announced it and it was out in just like, what, a couple of weeks or something? You could potentially see that just randomly show up online through announcement with Rockstar, and that's all they would need. It doesn't need to be in a direct doesn't need to be an initial showcase for the Switch 2 and games coming to it, you know, in like the, in the first half of the, of the that system's life. Rockstar just shows up, says, hey, Red Dead Redemption 2, out next month on the Switch, full price, and that's it. And then they just walk off. <laughs> and people will be like, well, okay, cool, I will check that one out. After seeing Mortal Kombat 1, I feel like companies understand that, yes, there is an audience that wants to buy the game to play it portably and don't necessarily mind the visual cutbacks. Although Mortal Kombat 1 is, uh, who that, that's cutting it close, I'll say. And in many cases, steps over that line that most people are willing to put up with for these games. So I think Red Dead Redemption 2 would be an incredibly interesting title to see in action on the Switch when it comes to some of the cutbacks they have to make. But they did get it to work on that Xbox One VCR. So I think there is a path for them to get it to work on the Switch at least somewhat. I don't know, it'd be interesting to see anyway. And I think would be like the ultimate impossible port for the system. So 
I guess keep our eyes out because Rockstar, no problem just showing up whenever they want announcing something like that. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Xbox at Tokyo Game Show with a certain interview that I think asked the correct question to Phil Spencer. When it comes to their efforts in Japan and creating games specifically with Japanese developers, whether they are partnering with these different studios or working on these games internally. We can see this posted up though. This is over on Game Watch where they say, as for my impressions from the showcase, I think it's good that more and more Japanese titles are coming to Xbox, but as an Xbox fan, I expect the same from Xbox as from PlayStation and Nintendo. Instead of doing something like Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon, the goal is to create AAA titles from Japan for Xbox. Will it be difficult to meet this expectation? I want to point out this is being translated for through Google and stuff, so some of this, this might sound a little off. Basically, the idea is, hey, a lot of the games you're getting right now out of Japan are already on PlayStation and Nintendo, and you're basically just having these games ported to the Xbox. How do we work to say, create more original products like a Lost Odyssey, like a Blue Dragon that people can put alongside of the Xbox specifically? Phil Spencer says, not really, you can count on it. In fact, Hi-Fi Hi Rush was released in, in 2023. Although it was a small work rather than a masterpiece like Blue Dragon, it must have been a high quality work. Japanese game creators are also part of Microsoft Game Studios. And although there are some titles that cannot be announced yet, they are working with Japanese manufacturers to develop new games. The development environment is growing, including first party and third party. So I think we can expect more Japanese titles to appear in the future. I know people have called for a Lost Odyssey 2. I don't know if that's on deck necessarily, but I think that would certainly turn some heads and get people paying attention to Xbox as, oh, they are going to be creating big original AAA titles, even though it's a sequel, but, but like games that would be more or less exclusive to Xbox, sure, but developed specifically in-house or with partners from the ground up and not saying, okay, what does Nintendo have? What does Sony have? Let's just get those ported over. Whether it's like Octopath Traveler 2, that was one that was recently announced. It's already on those platforms, but it's moving over to Xbox. And we see that where they'll announce these games then going into Game Pass as a, a pretty cool benefit, sure. But the idea is Microsoft is clearly living by uh, these, these studios that they are acquiring so that they can take these first party games and put them in the Game Pass and leave them there. Don't worry about third party deals running up or anything like that. And I think the idea of getting Japanese games and then move it, like porting them to Xbox is good in the short term. But what they really need to do is create these games specifically with Microsoft Studios in mind and having something like a, looking back on Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon, working something like that out for the current Xbox brand, I think would be a good idea and show that they are making serious efforts in Japan to make the Xbox more appealing. So Lost Odyssey 2, that'd be a cool announcement, but even just more original works that they develop in-house with Japanese studios and developers, I think would be a great step in the, in the right direction for Microsoft. But I guess we'll see going forward. Phil Spencer says that there are many games that cannot be announced yet. So yeah, maybe we'll look towards next year when their E3, not E3 time rolls around. They have a couple of those to show. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I ask, which game from these PS5 titles would you tell a new owner to buy first? I went through and tried to pick some of the, the titles. I mean, there's more than options here, obviously, but I was curious if people would pick out. Okay, yeah, Spider-Man Miles Morales remastered it. Of course, Spider-Man is very popular. Then God of War Ragnarok. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, look at this. Horizon is much lower than I thought. Man, Horizon just does not seem to appeal to as many people. I, I, I liked Horizon for Midwest. I thought it was a very good game, and I think it's a good showcase for the hardware in terms of visuals. And then Returnal's at the bottom, which th that's not too surprising necessarily when it comes to all the IPs that are mentioned here. Spider-Man, though, sure. I mean, Spider-Man 2 is coming up. You might buy a PS5 for Spider-Man 2 and have not played Spider-Man like on the PS4. So in that case, yeah, pick up Spider-Man Remastered and then buy Spider-Man Miles Morales or Ultimate, whatever, and then go from that into Spider-Man 2. I, I think then it makes a lot of sense to take advantage of this deal and pick both up at the same time. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Kat who says, Trails Through Daybreak is a perfect jumping on point for new fans since it's the start of a new story arc and has a mostly new cast. Trails into Reverie, which just came out a few months ago, wrapped up the previous two story arcs. 
Oh, well, there you go. You know, I, th I don't think it's a bad idea in, if that's the case where it's starting a new story arc, but you may have characters pop in and out of the story uh, that you've seen previously in other games. I don't think it's a bad idea to start there necessarily, because if you do get really into it, you can then go back and play those old games and then learn about some of these characters' backstories that are appearing. And it's good to hear that this is the start of a new story arc so people can kind of just jump in and try it out. And you know what, you've convinced me. I will pick this one up and I'll give it a shot. Although I was also working on Trails of Cold Steel. So uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, we'll see where I land on this one. Maybe I'll go back, try to get that done before this one comes out. So uh, yeah, definitely no shortage of, of Legend of Heroes games, that's for sure. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything. We talked about here today was the big shakeup at Platinum Games, Hideki Kamiya departing. What do you think the story is there with all that? And what do you think is next? for Kamiya. And then also, what about this deal with Sony? Which game would you pick for a new PlayStation 5 owner? And then Red Dead Redemption 2. Do you think that can actually work on the Switch? And what do you think it'll look like? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.